Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Believer's Voice of Victory. Kelly and I are back with you today on the Word of God, and we just, Kelly and I like the Word. <laughs> so we want you to just, just join us, get your Bible and listen and and let the Word feed you. You know, you need to read the Word every day somewhere. I read the Word every day somewhere. You don't have to spend hours in the Word, but you may want to sometimes. <laughs> and so, you, but you do spend some time in it every day and praying in the Spirit. Hallelujah. That's the way you grow up. What have you got, Kelly? Well, Stir you know, us up. I was just thinking, the more you get to know Jesus and the more His loveliness comes into your life, you want to know what he says. That's exactly right. And the so freer you hard. get, the more interested you get in listening <laughs> and reading what he says. I think people think, well, I have to start reading the Bible to be a good Christian, and I have to start this. No, the place to start is with him. He said one thing is needful. That's right. And it was just being at his feet. That's what he told Martha. Now that's Mary what we chose do that one know thing. when we're in the Word of God. Like we're sitting at the feet of Jesus, learning that's the Word. It. And but it's not a drudgery, like a duty that's oh, going to no. somehow mm -hmm. this duty that you do to read the Word, and that's going to somehow make you pious and holy. It does not work that it's way. It's a duty only if you don't believe it. If you believe what it said says, it's exciting. It and gets when you, you stirred up, and when you get to know the one who said it, yes, then it's of course not you have hard. to start there. Be, be born again, be filled with the Holy Spirit, who's a teacher, and you get in the Word, you will like it. <laughs> and you know what, Mom? Here's what I found. We what? can struggle to do the things that, that the Word says work. Mm -hmm. And I've done that, and it's better than nothing. The Word works. That's right. When I have to struggle with it, it makes it harder to live it out as a natural part of your life. But when you get to know Him and get to know it's just so easy to come into His presence. Amen. He has opened the door to us. Coming into His presence is nothing more than opening a conversation with Him. If I, if I didn't know Him at all, and I just said, Lord, come into my heart. I, I just came into that. His presence. I just invited Him into mine. Yeah. He's waiting on us to come in close. He's not, He can't overpower our lives unless we want him. We have to have him. We have to invite him. He's not going to come do it against our will. That's oh, what no. I'm going to try. Now, he's going to keep moving on you and moving on you and moving on you and coming and coming and coming and calling you and putting calling people. you and calling you, what putting people into your path because he Somebody wants your said, presence. People keep talking to me and they're reading out of books that look like newspapers. It was some time back when there were paperbacks like that, you know, of the Bible. The Bible. And then the guy couldn't figure it out for a while, but he made it. You know, now they've even I made believe. a Bible that actually looks like Oh, it was good news for modern newspaper. man, yeah. wasn't that it? You know, Jesus is like, whatever it takes, I'm going to get my word yeah. to you, even if I have to make it look like a newspaper. That's right. That's right. <laughs> or even if I have to, you know, put people on TV so they'll be in your face and available all day long, 24-7. <laughs> well, he's That's done right. that for you. Oh, man. And so being in his presence is not hard. It's just open your mouth and say something to him. He's not running from you. He's not hard to find. Oh, no, he's But the more you. you do that, you'll find the more you answer his call to be in his presence... The hungrier you get for him, the more he reveals himself to you. You know, Hebrews um, 11, 6 says he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And in the Passion Translation, it says to those who give all their passion and strength into seeking him. Kelly, think about how much more difficult it would be to come into the presence of the Lord, stay there, walk with him day by day if you didn't have the printed word. Oh anointed word. You wouldn't know what he said. No. And, and that has, people haven't always had that. Adam didn't have it. He had a word though. God talked to him direct. But that written word is pure gold. It is. Boy, Glory you can, God. if you just read it as a duty, a religious duty, it, it's, it, it, it's, it can be just words on a paper. Mm -hmm. But when, even if you know nothing about him, if you read any word in this book knowing 
It's from Him. It's God speaking. It has life it's from to God. your life. It will bring life into your life. Even, and He'll begin to reveal Himself layer after layer after layer. Even in the New Testament, those books were called letters. That's true. They were letters. They're letters to us. Spirit-filled, dynamite. The anointed letter. And you know, when we read this letter, even Paul said, we ourselves become a letter. Written. Yeah. Written. And you, have, you are a letter written for all of us to read. Praise but the God. way you've led your life and you answered the call and it changed your life. And when things got good and better, you didn't just stop because you're comfortable. I keep, we keep, we're going to bring that out That's all right. week. We keep growing. But you taught in this series... 35 years ago, this is what we're talking about, this series that you taught, and it was a few months after you began praying in the Spirit an hour a day. Now, you'd been spending time with the Lord and His Word an hour a day or more. Yeah. But you began... I was impressed to pray You were pray impressed to pray in the Spirit an hour and a day, and it really, it changed your life, but it I did. can hear in this series that you did, it lit a fire and a passion for sure Jesus in you. And it'll do the same thing for That's you. Right. It's done the same thing for me. He drew me in. Well, what's the I scripture answered his say? call. You'll you know the truth with him. and the truth will make you free. Oh, he will make That's your life free. That's what the word free. does. It makes you free. If you spend much time with him at all, you're going to get freer. That's right. And freer and freer. And I, I, I don't ever quit doing that. I'm going to do that as long as I have eyeballs and breath and ears because that's how you live healed and well and prosperous and victorious. Hallelujah. And, you, and that's what the scripture says, that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And then it says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So there's a victory and a success plan right there mm -hmm. in a nutshell. Praise God. You just God. put yourself in it when he called. And I like it. And you like it. And you began to talk on this series, Mom, about... It's funny, even in the Beatitudes, it has layers of growth with the Lord. It's like you get saved and now you've got Him and, and everything belongs to you, but maybe you can't see it. Yeah. But then you begin to grow and you begin to grow in love and then you begin to grow in mercy and then you begin to give out what you've learned. You sow into others. That is mm, a growth progression of someone that lives with Jesus. And you said in this series, you said, We've heard a lot of teaching about faith, but it's time for the faithfulness to rise up in us. And you started talking about devoted, being devoted. Hmm. The, this devotedness to the Lord. To that. That's good. It's going to bless you. This devotedness to the Lord, He's looking for that. He's looking for someone He will make well, their life centered on Him, make their life a is, walk with him. Help me quote this scripture. The eyes of the Lord go to and fro throughout the whole earth looking for that heart. Well, how it's what it, I, I want you to read. I how the end of it reads. <laughs> I want you to read that. It's in 2 Chronicles. It's in my notes. Okay, good. 2 Chronicles 16, 9. And in that series, you go straight to this verse. But I want you to yeah, start at 7. It. Start at verse 7 and read through okay. 10 for me. Let's see what it and says. At that time, Herod, no, at that time, Hannah, Hannah, Hannah. the Hannah. seer, Hannah? I don't the know. The seer? <clears throat> anyway, a prophet. The seer came to Asa, king of Judah, and said unto him, Because you have relied, uh, no, what? Retired? Relied. Relied? Yeah, mine says you've well, put your trust. Well, I've got a lot trust. of notes in my Bible. Sorry. This though. says you've put your trust. Because you have rely, relied on him, hmm. the king of Syria, and not on God, not relied on God, God, therefore, the is the host of the king of Syria escaped out of your hand. What was I going to read here? The eyes of the Lord... In verse 9 it says, Run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in behalf of them whose heart is perfect or upright or righteous toward him. Not good. He's looking for hearts that he, he can work in and lives that he can fix and heal. Hallelujah. Well, digging in just a little bit deeper because I never really had before. But... This, my, I like the way the New Living says it, so I'm going to read a little bit of that again. Okay, he goes, good. 
This is what the prophet said to King Asa. Because you've put your trust in the king of Aram, which I guess is Syria. What verse is that? This is verse 7. Now verse 8 says, oh, verse 7 says, you, instead of the Lord your God, you missed your chance to destroy the army mm. of the king of Aram. God had a plan, For but victory. because... Now that's a good thing. He, he did not put his trust in God. He did his own thing. He trusted somebody else. It says, don't you remember what happened to the Ethiopians and Libyans and their vast army with all their chariots and charioteers? At that time, you relied on the Lord. So there was this massive army. And when he relied on the Lord, the Lord handed the massive army, just handed him over to him. So it wasn't a struggle. I Sometimes guess. we think, well, I've got to take care of this or that or the other because this is weighing and this is big and this is important and this is a struggle for me. So I've got to deal with it. But the Lord's saying, it's when you think you can take care of it yourself and you don't rely on me that it's a struggle. That's he can what, just hand things over to you. That's what faith's all about. He can give you truths. He can give you answers. I mean, we talked yesterday. He gave me Christmas decoration answers. Not important, I know, to some people, but you know what? It saves me a ton of time. In all practicality, it's important to me because yeah. it's going to save me a ton of time. That's he right. gave me multiple stuff like that about work, about my kids, sure, about life, the about Christmas, the Lord. whatever it is. It can't be too You'll unimportant know the truth, to him. And the truth will make you free, that Scripture says. But what's the key to getting that, Mom? Access, give it's him access. Giving him, getting into his presence, mm -hmm. coming to him when he calls you. He's calling us all. Praise so God. this says, That's the eyes of the Lord are searching the whole earth in order to strengthen those mm -hmm. whose hearts, you, it said in your ver version there, perfect. Upright this says, and perfect. fully committed. I like yeah. that. You said, you described dedicated. it as being devoted, mm -hmm. devoted or right. dedicated. And um, it says, what a fool you've been. Why is the Lord doing that? Because he wants to bless you. Yes. He's looking for people to bless. That's, that's what he plan. does. Huh? It's his plan. That's right. But how's he going to get us in the plan? We're all saying, you know, God, why don't you help me? God, I need this. I need that. And well, he's like, that's... well, that's my plan to help you, but you got to get in it with me. Yeah. And so he says here, what a fool you've been. You know, we can say to ourselves. Now, what verse? My Bible doesn't read that way. Well, what I'm in the it? New Living. Well, what is that? What verse? That was verse um, 9, the last half of verse oh. 9. I could say that to myself. Kelly. Yeah, well, the scripture said, this King James at the end says, uh, Herein you have done foolishly. Therefore, from hence that forth thou shalt have wars. You'll be at war. So they, he, he dealt with them a long time, but... They wouldn't, they wouldn't listen. They wouldn't do what he said. And ultimately, they had wars. And that happens a lot. You can apply that to lives today. God will deal with people and deal with people and put witnesses across their path. And sooner or later, if they don't yield, they're going to crash. They're going to hit the wall. So we need to yield to God and be careful to listen. And that's why we... It's so valuable to all of us and you too to spend time in the Word every day because you're feeding on God's will when you're here. He's telling you what to do, what to do. You'll, if you'll do this, I'll do this. Well, when he talks about it in Hebrews, he says, don't harden your heart. Yeah. And he was telling them, I had a promised land for you. I had a land of rest. But you hardened your hearts and you relied on something else. Yep. You didn't take that you time with me. You wouldn't receive it. In fact, let's just take, we'll come back to this, but that's a good example because God says to Moses, okay, tell all the people, go clean up, go get ready and come to the mountain. Not Eagle Mountain, but, but come to my home. I'm inviting you to come to my home. You know, that, that would have changed everything for the children of Israel. Sure. Um, he's saying, come up to my mountain. He's invited. Now we have to invite him. <laughs> he was inviting them, and actually he has invited us. Now we have to come. That's he's right. called he's us. us. We have to come. But the children of Israel, they went, and, and the, um, Hamash says, Mom, that they heard the first commandment. 
and that it rumbled. His hmm. voice thundered from the first commandment. Got their and attention. they heard it, but it scared them. And in the Hamash, it says, the evil inclination, the evil natural way was driven out from them, from the first commandment. Now, what was the first commandment? Thou shalt have no other, no gods. other gods before me. Now, can I ask you, have the Israelites, they have, they've kept that, they have God, they serve God through thick and thin and yeah. hard things. God didn't want those hard things for them, but they did do the first commandment. But you know what? They heard him in his mountain speak that, but they ran from the rest and they told Moses, you go talk to him. We don't want to talk. We don't want to talk to him. Fair God. You him. go talk to him it was and then so you powerful. tell us what he said. And so how many times have we done that? We're like, pastor, you even say this on that series, mom. You're like, pastor, you go talk to the Lord and we'll just show up and you tell well, us what he said. That's why a lot of churchgoers won't to happen. They want the pastor to do all the work. But that does not drive the evil flesh, the evil desires, or even not so evil, but just desires that can become a lust of the flesh um, or a pre uh, uh, strong desires. You said the Greek in that means strong desires, that word lust. Strong desire towards this or that or the other. I can look back over my past and I can see where there were times when I just had such a strong desire for my family that I left God out. Or such a strong desire for, I mean, I could say to a degree, when I had this strong desire to get my stuff done in my house and get on top of things, there was a level that I backed off from my presence with God. Well, I was the one that didn't gain. Of course, I'm so sold now, I can't back off for very long and not go. Well, you learn better to not be forced into things, oh, but no. to, to uh, delegate your life so that you're doing the things that you should spiritually. Then all the things like praying and talking to the Lord, the Word of God, then all these natural things. Get well, in I've line. begun to learn, love my time with Him. Yes. So when I miss it, Amen. I miss it. It's not a duty. I just miss it. And I, we're almost out of time. So let me finish this and I want to read a little bit from some of the words He said to me in my time with Him then we're going to hear from you. It says, um, so what a fool you've been. Now you'll be at war. Asa became so angry with Hanani for saying this that he threw him into prison and put him in the stocks. So he didn't want to hear it. How many, we, there's times we just don't want to hear. We don't even want to hear what the preacher says. At that time, Asa also began to oppress some of his people. You know why I'm reading that? Is because when we let go of the the things that God is giving us to rule and to reign in victory, we begin to try to do it ourselves. We begin to try to control people ourselves. Yeah, and the other. Try to get our own way ourselves. And he began to oppress people when really God wanted to just hand it to him. We're let, we let the dark side <laughs> take over. The dark the side. Devil. We don't want the dark side. But then, it's Mom. That, that's why the scripture says, cast out the devil. You can, you're not supposed to put up with him. Uh -uh. Not listen to him. Don't follow him. Get rid of him. Bind him. But, you know, he's not engaged with me when I'm in the presence of the Lord. No. He, and look here, what he actually, he said, this is why he was a fool. It was because the, the Lord had said to him, listen to me, Asa. Listen, all you people of Judah and Benjamin. The Lord will stay with you as long as you stay with him. That's exactly the Wherever, way Wherever, whenever you seek him, you You'll will find, find him. him. That's but right. if you abandon him, he'll abandon you. Who, aban who did the abandoning? not God. And Jesus never abandons you, but you'll feel that way if you abandon him. For a long time, Israel was without the true God. But whenever they were in trouble and turned to the Lord, he was always, they, they always found him. And so they abandoned him. They didn't listen to him. And that's when the Lord is saying to him, the eyes of the Lord search the whole Good earth and fro, going to strengthen the those whole whose hearts are fully committed to looking him. Looking for those. He's yeah. looking for people to bless. To bless. And we'll talk about that some tomorrow. What is that? This is Second Chronicles yeah, 16. Yeah, Second Chronicles 16. And you, uh, one of these things that he said to me in my time with him, he said, I am healing. I am debt freedom. I am youth renewed. Amen. I am your love. I am your husband, the lifter of your head. I take that seriously. This is the Lord said this to me. Praise God. To comfort you when Amen. you mourn. My fire flows to you when you look at me. 
sit at my feet. It's when you are in the other room and distracted that I can't reach you. Hmm. So the same way he was drawing the, the right. children of Israel. The Lord always does his part. He, he always, always does, does what he says. And he's always there even when we get if distracted. If he says you do this and you'll be devoured, you do that it's and you'll done. be devoured. <laughs> he, I, he won't devour you, but something will. But he also said, you draw near to me. And I'll That's where I'm going you. right there. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Kelly and I'll be right back. Faithfulness. God has to have a people that are faithful. He's looking for men and women that are faithful. God's not looking for ability. He's looking for availability. It doesn't matter what you are in the natural how smart you are, how good looking you are, where you come from. The natural realm's no problem to God. He's got the ability and he'll give you his ability. But what he has to do is get someone that will make themselves available to him. Someone that'll be faithful to him. He's looking for people that are faithful. He's got to have people that are faithful. The Bible says that Moses was faithful. God had to have a faithful man for that hour to stretch out his hand in the earth and command his will to be done. See, God didn't stretch out his hand. Moses stretched out his hand, and then God stretched out his hand to move, to do signs and wonders. He had to have a man that would dare to act on his word and be faithful. I've told him, I'm faithful, and I'm going to stay faithful. In the Bible, when it says, who is that wise and faithful servant? I put my name out beside that verse. Well, if I don't determine to be faithful, how can anybody do it for me? I have to make that decision to sell out to the things of God. We hope you enjoyed today's teaching from Kenneth Copeland Ministries. And remember, Jesus is Lord.